it through the winter. The weather's beautiful again. Time to get outside, cook some barbecue. We're smoking ribs today. So Memorial Day is coming up. Done a few prep items for it. We've got some barbecue sauce that should be in your fridge. We know how to make coleslaw. Today we're pulling out all the stops to show you how to make smoked ribs, but to do it the right way using Adrenaline Barbecue's Slow and Sear and the Weber Kettle. A lot of new subscribers came over the last week and I'm super thrilled to have you. So welcome. If you're new here, there's a few recipes that will relate to this that I'll link down below as well. We got a few hours of cooking to do, so let's just get right into it. So as you can see, we have one rack of baby back ribs here. This is a nice rack. I got it from Whole Foods. Came with the membrane taken off already, which is the sort of thing that runs through. That is a little bit tough and you don't want to eat it. And generally, I take it off before cooking, but the butcher at Whole Foods said you should leave it on, cook with it. It'll help maintain the moisture. And when it's done cooking, just rip it off before basting with sauce. It'll come off super easy and Hopefully it will help uh, maintain more moisture in the ribs. So that's a good tip that I didn't really think about. So it's pretty clean. So first off, what I wanna do is salt this and let this sit in salt for as long as I can. Ideally, you'd wanna do this a day ahead. Giving it as much time and salt as you can is gonna just be a benefit. And it's gonna take about an hour or so for me to get the kettle ready and the smoke to sort of start burning clean before we're gonna get this on. So it's gonna have like an hour or so to what we call salt brine. So I'm just gonna add salt, not too much. Both sides. I'm just gonna let this sit in the refrigerator while we get the kettle going. So this right here is 22 inch premium Weber kettle. The one you saw me give away a few weeks ago. Now the three things that are adrenaline barbecue products are this grate that spins around and it also has a piece that comes out so we can do a long, slow smoke and have access to kind of our wood to play around and all that stuff. So I'm gonna remove this for today. And then we have our grate, we have our drip pan right here. That can be used to cook with, but today mainly it's just there to keep our kettle nice and clean. And then we have our slow and sear box right here. This is what's gonna hold our charcoal. It's gonna radiate heat up and not outward, so it's gonna convect heat around the kettle. It also helps make good, efficient use of the coals. So let's just get this started. And I wanna add like 10 or 12 charcoals on one side of the slow and sear. Bundle them up a little bit like that. Then I have these little wax cubes. These act as pretty good starters. I'm just gonna get it lit. Now usually this will take about like 15 minutes, but I got this little fan from Geek Air. It's like a little cheap portable fan. It has a few speed. And that's just gonna speed this process up like from 15 minutes to like five to 10. I forgot to add the water reservoir. Now a barbecue pit master, Harry Sue, recommends putting your wood below the charcoal. So that's how I'm gonna do it, and I'm using applewood. Applewood to me has a sweeter smoke, but you play around with whatever you like. And then you fill up the rest of the slow and sear. And then about a quart of boiling or steaming water right into the reservoir. You want it hot. So now our slow and sear is set up for smoking, low and slow smoking. This water reservoir, it's hot, right? So we're not gonna put cold water in there and waste some of this energy to get that hot. It's already kind of steaming and boiling. That's gonna help regulate constant, consistent temperatures in the kettle. And it's also gonna help create steam, which helps them promote some of that smoke to adhere to the meat. And that's how you get that beautiful smoke ring on smoked meats. I got the Maverick thermometer here. This is from Adrenaline Barbecue as well. Then I'm gonna put the lid on with the vent on the indirect side, not directly over the heat. You wanna do that so you can allow that smoke to maneuver over your meat, not just exit out of the kettle. So now you wanna adjust the vents. And the top vent, to start, you just kinda of wanna open about a third of the way. And then the bottom, we just wanna open about a quarter of the way. Now I don't know if you can see it, but this smoke looks really white and thick. An important aspect of smoking meats and barbecue is identifying bad smoke from good smoke, or clean smoke, as they say. An easy way to be able to tell is use your nose, right? That smells like really bitter and like, you know, something's burning. It's not a pleasant smoke aroma. And you can see it's just very thick white smoke, right? That is a good example. 
that's not necessarily what you want to smoke meat in. You want to smoke that's almost invisible, sort of bluish. It's almost like a very subtle thing that you're not going to be able to notice. But if you smoke long enough, you're going to be able to tell the difference. Even if you just get over it and smell it, you're going to be able to notice there's a good smelling version and a bad smelling version. And you're just trying to aim for that good one. An easy way to do that is maintaining consistent temperature. You don't want to be adjusting the vents the entire cooking process. The slow and sear is designed to make it really easy so that you can get the meat on and then just let it do its thing. If it's too hot or too cool, we're going to make small adjustments to get them to anywhere from 225 degrees to 200. 75 degrees. I'm okay with that 50 degree range. I just wanted to keep it at one temperature throughout most of the cooking process. So I got my thermometer. We're just going to monitor the temps. We're going to let this smoke get clean and we're going to prepare our ribs for the grill in the meantime. So our kettle is preheating. In the meantime, let's get a little dry rub going. Now I made dry rub before on this show and like my barbecue sauce, it's not really something I measure. So I've got a lot of my spices. And since I already salted my pork, this is gonna be a salt-free rub. And like any rub I normally do, I like to start with two parts of chili powder and two parts of paprika, two parts of cumin, two parts of coriander, and then one part mustard powder, one part onion powder, one part garlic powder, one part sumac, which is optional, but I find it's amazing in barbecue rubs. It's got sort of a citrusy element to it with a color of chili powder, so it goes really well with all of these things. And then a little bit of cayenne to taste, you know, a teaspoon or two, depending on how spicy you like. So I'm just gonna go in and just make it really rough. A, a rub is forgiving, so, you know, don't worry about measuring too, too much. If you want a good measure, you can do the cup, a cupful. So there's your two parts. And some black pepper. And last but not least, about a quarter cup of brown sugar. And now just mix that up. Get all the clumps out. You don't want clumps. That looks like it's good to me. Oh, what happened over here? Now what I want to do is cover this in oil, lightly coat it in the rub. Not too much. You don't want to cake it on, but you want it nicely evenly coated. And our smoke is looking good. So I think we're going to get this guy onto the kettle. Smoke is looking clean. Time to get the ribs onto the grill. And the Weber kettle is amazing, right? It's not super tight, and I have a problem with leakage sometimes. What I mean by that is like, I want the smoke just coming from the vent, not leaking out of the side. So I just have these little binder clips and I just clip the lid on. That's gonna give it a tighter seal. It's gonna make sure my temperatures don't start fluctuating a lot. Now we're just gonna wait for our temperature to get back up to 225, dial in our vents, and just let this thing cook for about an hour before we start spritzing it. So now that our ribs are on the grill, we have a lot of waiting to do, and every hour, half hour or so, we're gonna spritz them a little bit with, we call a little bit of a mop. Everybody's got their own version of it. Some people just use water, some people use apple juice, some people use pomegranate juice. Worcestershire sauce, all sorts of stuff. I'm gonna fill this up about a third the way up with apple cider vinegar to start. Then about equal parts Worcestershire sauce. And then finish it off with the equal parts water. And this is what I'm gonna spritz the ribs with around once every hour. So our temperature is at 446 now. It crept up a little bit, but I didn't touch the vents. I figured it would just arrive around 250-ish and I'll just let it cook at that temperature. So I'm gonna give it my first spritz. So it's a little over the two hour mark. Our temperature is around 240. I want you to notice clean smoke that we have here. That's what you want. So I'm gonna give it another quick spritz. I 
left it open for too long. Now the smoke is getting all dirty. So that's not what you want. You know, I gotta get, I gotta get my shots. So it's important to keep the lid open for as short a period as possible to maintain that clean smoke that you worked for. But it'll calm down, it'll clean up in a few minutes. All right, it's been three hours. I think it's about to rain, so it's actually perfect time. The ribs aren't done yet, but what we're about to do is called the 3 2, one method, which means the ribs are on there for three hours, unwrapped, getting all that smoke. Then it's on for another two hours, wrapped in foil, and then taken out and put back on for another half hour, an hour. So that's what we're gonna do right now. It's agave. A little bit more brown sugar. And a little bit of that mop that we had. Now we're just gonna cook that for two hours, take them out. Then we're gonna take them out of the wrapping, get them back onto the grill for a little bit longer, firm up that bark, paint on some barbecue sauce, and we're done. It's almost been two hours wrapped. I wanna get a little bit more smoke on it when I unwrap it, but I wanna get that clean smoke. So I'm just gonna throw this chunk on right now and get that smoke nice and clean for when I'm ready to unwrap. Got my barbecue sauce from last week's episode. You need a link for this, it'll be down below, but you should have it already made. And we're about ready to start to glaze the ribs. Lid back on, let that sauce glaze up, and we should be ready to serve. So it took a little longer than expected, to probably the longest it's ever taken me to cook ribs. And it's just this little thick part up here that took way longer to get to where I wanted it as this little end piece right here that kind of fell off. And let's just give it a little bite. That's perfect. So you're not really going by temperature, you're going by tenderness. You know, you can stick a fork in it. It just needs to be soft. And one way is how it bends. This rib tapered in a lot. So it was a lot thinner and smaller at the end than it was on one side. So, you know, it's a little tricky with ribs, but still came out really good. So there you have it, exactly how I like it. You don't want it falling off the bone really, you want a little bit of texture left. So it's like a pull away, not a fall off the bone. It should sort of stay intact after you take a bite. And then the bone should be clean. We got a beautiful bark on here. Just look at that beauty. We got smoke ring. This is the first thing I ever really got good at in terms of barbecuing. It's only because I did it a bunch of times. Barbecuing is about understanding fire and smoke and temperature and how to manipulate all of those things the way that you want. So start barbecuing, give it a shot. The slow and sear makes the job really easy. Like, you saw what I did. It was really just a matter of time. That entire charcoal basket finished up at the end of the cook, so I was able to use one basket throughout the entire cook time. I didn't really have to fuss. Make sure you just keep that lid closed most of the time, quick spritz, close it right back up, and Memorial Day's coming up this week. I bet you everyone in your family and everyone you might be having over for a guest would love this. Said all the links are down below in the description in case you are interested in any of the products used in this video. They are affiliate links. 
Look, a ladybug. I oh, think the, but the ladybug flew away. And uh, anyway, next episode, we're gonna do some crab rolls. That's gonna be delicious, so stay tuned for that. Thanks to all my patrons scrolling on the screen. If you'd like to become a patron, there should be a link that pops up on the screen any second now. That's all that I have today. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself. I...